The one who sweats more in training bleeds less on the battlefield. Assalamu alaikum, and this is your brother Muhammad Arshad. And I want to share something with you, right? There's a famous saying which says, which I just said to you, which is, the one who sweats more in training bleeds less on the battlefield. And what this means is that the way you prepare for something will define the outcome, right? And this is very, very important. I want to give you a real life example of where I used to apply this. And I think it's very important to do this uh, when it comes to the training that you're doing. So when you're trying to help people to build skills, you want to do exactly what I'm going to tell you. So what I did is many, many years ago, I used to be a counselor on a telephone helpline. So people would ring in with their problems. Um, mostly it was called Muslim Youth Helpline. So mostly it was youth. Um, and I dealt with lots of different problems. But my speciality uh, was dealing with clients who had gone through um, sexual abuse or self-harm or were suicidal. Um, so these were the most of the calls that I handled personally. And so what happened is that that kind of became uh, something I became an expert at handling. Um, and so eventually I was asked to do training on it, right? So because um, we, I was doing training for people, there were some clients that we speak to uh, that were very, very difficult to deal with. Like I'm talking about difficult in terms of like emotionally for you to be able to think about the difficult things that they're going through for you to be able to support them and all of that right so i i would think to myself well i'm going to train these people who are going to go on there how do i make the training effective for them because this is a really important skill so what i would do um, is after giving them the tools and the tips i would basically do role play with them and and this is really really important like if you're doing anything which requires any form of communication then you must do role play uh, with your people right so what I did is that I would do role play once they learned the skills and they would be um, they would be the the counselor and I would be the client okay but when I would be the client I would be the most extreme version of the client like I'll be like really really bad because I wanted them in the training ground when it's safe for them to experience real difficulty, for them to feel challenged, for them to feel like overwhelmed, for them to feel like I can't do this, like literally to that point. And so what would happen is that we would basically go around the room, it was usually like 10, 15 people, um, and they would all take turns like trying to counsel me as the person that was you know, suicidal or going through self-harm or whatever. Um, and what I would do, like I said, is I would make it extremely, extremely difficult. Um, so. What happened is as they were going through it, you know, they found it so difficult. They were so like upset and they were like, you know, I made it very, very realistic um, because I had experience of it. And a lot of them were distraught. A lot of them were like, uh, felt like their confidence was knocked. They felt like maybe they can't do this. They started questioning them and all of that. Um, and of course, once it was all over, I really, really reassured them. I said, don't worry, you're going to be fine. OK, so anyway, we continue with the training. We did lots more role play. Now, when they got onto the real helpline and onto the real phones and they started dealing with it, they came back to me later, some of them, and they said, you know what, that role play you did, it really helped me because like that was such an extreme version that when I got onto that real call, like even some of them spoke to the person I was pretending to be, they said it wasn't that hard. It was like actually a lot easier than it was with me, right? And that's because obviously I was very evil to them. I was making it very difficult. But the beauty of that is that they expected it to be very difficult. They expected it to be very hard and to go through much worse uh, maybe than what they did even in the training. But when they got there, they found it to be very comfortable. And they basically, um, what it did is it actually increased their confidence because they thought, oh, I thought like I wouldn't be able to handle it, but I could handle it and it was easier. And so this goes back to the original saying, which is, Whoever like sweats more in the training will bleed less in the battlefield. And so when you're creating training, when you're thinking about, you know, helping people uh, to get skills and all this kind of stuff, it's really, really important that you teach them the knowledge. It's important that you do the role plays and stuff. Um, but when you do role plays, make it very extreme, make it very difficult for them. Um, and then when they get to the actual work, inshallah, they'll do a great job and they'll thank you and they'll remember you for it as well. Jazakallah khair for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.